And there's just so many different areas where these where these differences can be coming up from. That's what could potentially make it difficult for these teams to try and respond. I mean, is it in picks and bans? Are they giving too much up to some of these other squads? As we actually are ready, it looks like, to move into picks and bans here for game two between E United and Black Dragons. I mean, Benji able to flex into playing the Athena solo and to still look good on it. I mean, can they allow that one to happen again? I mean, the Uller for Venenu, we know how comfortable he is on that. Or do they have to make those adjustments here and take some of those away? I really think it was just Scream had a really, really good game on the Mercury. Yeah. And, and part of it was the pick itself, but part of it was just the way that he executed it. Uh, I, I, I don't mind Black Dragon's draft in the last game. Like I said, I thought it was pretty solid. Uh, P-Bay was looking really good in the early game as well. But they need to... It was a little bit too early game focused for the draft. Like the Sylvanas wasn't able to do as much in the late game. Sirket is a bit, is very difficult to pilot in late game team fights. Black Dragon's strength is in their late game. I'd like to see them highlight it a little bit more in the draft this time around. And last time we were talking about how we felt so confident in Black Dragon's late game, but E-United didn't let them sort of get to that point where they could feel comfortable. You can start to see the, the flashes when some of those Phoenix Sieges weren't as perhaps as clean or as easy as maybe they would have thought, but in the end, E-United were able to grab it, and they're going to grab the Uller for themselves again. Going to probably give that over to Venenu in the mid lane, but Kakulin Nemesis going to be the response picks from Black Dragons. So this opens up Sirket now for Scream. Or no, excuse me, E-United banned away that Sirket right away so i like black dragons that this is the exact same first two picks except for they trade out the one band jungler in game one for the band jungler in game number two last time united went jingwei athena here in this slot and honestly panic cat played so well wouldn't mind seeing him go back to the jingwei at all i do wonder if something like a fafnir might might be worth picking though with the double hunter this time around for polar bear mike i think the amaterasu was more in response to the sylvanas coming out from P-Bay to try and match that early lane pressure that, you know, Ama brings great lane clear yeah. in the earlier stages as a warrior in comparison to most junglers. I think that this could be a spot where Fafnir in that coerce is just so valuable with the double hunter. I don't have a problem with Athena again either. I mean, honestly, it's been such a strong pick lately, so why not get that top in there to try and help out setting up for Venenu and whatever else they want to draft to go along with this E-United roster. But as you mentioned, there's a ton of really strong picks still available. I know they have oh, the Uller, but even Giannis is still open if they want it, but that's not going to be the call. They're going to go Jingwei and Sylvanas pulling this away from Black Dragons. I mean, we didn't even get a chance to kind of talk about Pibe. He played well last game, didn't he? He did, he did, and he played well, but... Oh, I gotta say, it's not just on Pibe. It's on uh, it's on Eclis as well. Where in the world are the Witchblades? Uh, sure. Double Hunter, we've seen it so many times this week. We have not seen one single Witchblade. No, uh, no Jade Emperor's Crown either. That's a little bit too late a lot of the time. I think that the, the Sovereignty and Lotus Crown build for Sylvanas is still better than picking up a Jade Emperor's. But there are a lot of auto attack hate items in the game and we just aren't seeing enough of them the horrific emblems the witch blades uh mormon guardian males those are the sorts of things that we need to be seeing more of against these hunters we've seen plenty of the mcguardian males we've seen a little bit of the horrific emblem very little witch blades and i and i think it's being criminally under purchased right now yeah there's a ton of just good physical protection items in general doesn't it yeah. it's one of the, the stats that feels the best to kind of build into doesn't it because there's so many good ways to get that done so i agree with you there's lots of options to try and shut this down perhaps that's part of why some of these teams like dingtus and rival feel so conf confident going into the double hunter draft we'll see if black dragons can sort of get that same thing going for them here in this game as they are going to be going up against the uller jingwei yet again only this time they'll have a little bit of sustain to help them out with that Sylvanas. I think Giannis could be a really good pick yes. here for Nan should he want it. I mean, the, the Raw was pretty solid last game, but didn't end up bringing quite enough. Geb was a fine pick as well. Makes it so that it's harder for these hunters to itemize into crit because of his passive. Means that he won't be taking nearly as much damage from them. And it stops that axe combo for Uller very nicely. We do see Hercules going to be banned next. I love this call. Try and take that one away from Benji. This is they they often get. I feel like solo laners for Benji early on in the draft. So this time they feel comfortable waiting. That does mean that Black Dragons can try and take some of the picks he likes. They already have Kakulin for themselves. Achilles off the table. Hercules now banned. Try and force him off these good boxing warriors. Last time it was the Fafnir that was banned by Black Dragons. Next, and can't imagine that's where they'll go with a Sylvanas already locked in so athena might be the correct ban here to try and keep benji 
off of a pick that he's already played so far this set. Oh, yeah, and Athena just fits into any comp, doesn't she? I mean, yeah. it, just, it just makes everything better having Defender of Olympus and the Taunt. So I would agree with you that that's a, a strong pick to take away from United here at this point since Black Dragons already have the Geb for themselves. And then they'll be able to throw it back over to United to take one more ban. There's no mid laner picked up for Black Dragons, so maybe they might want to try and ban Giannis themselves here, perhaps? Could go for Giannis ban or could try and limit the hunter pool that much more because two hunters are already off the table That's right, because yeah. of the United's pick, so he may be able Hachiman to... Hachiman could be a real good ban here. Yeah, yeah, Hachiman, Artemis, both would be sure. pretty solid bans. Marcel's has played almost exclusively ROM so far, so you could also ban that and just see what else he has in the god pool. So it, I, I don't mind either of those strategies for United. It is going to be Ratatoskr that get banned, gets banned out here from Black Dragon, so a different type of somewhat global presence that they're choosing to take off the board as opposed to the Athena that we that we talked about earlier. But I don't mind turning an eye towards Scream here, Ryan. No, Scream is such a catalyst for this EU United roster. And I think Ratatoskr is a very smart band because he is so good at providing early game pressure. Scream is one of the best junglers at pushing leads, knows exactly where to be at all times, is able to split push the map very well. We yep. saw it last game. Ratatoskr is, a, is the exact type of god that he can excel with. It's smart band by Black Dragons. It is going to be those two hunters that we talked about. And I like this from E-United. I think Hachiman might be the more meta ban, probably the hunter that's valued a little bit more than Rom. But the one valued by Marcel's seems to pretty clearly be Rom at this point. So ban that, force him to make the adjustment over to the Hachiman, because we saw Marcel's get some good shots, try and make him play something different. Agre completely agreed, but Hachiman has fallen off a little bit. I think hunters are picking a little bit less of him at this land. It's a lot more Rom and that kind of stuff than what we've seen before, the Jing Wei and whatnot. But man, doesn't Barracuda make Hachiman look like doesn't the he? best hunter still? <laughs> he, he's had a really, really good performance with that god so far this week. So I, I like Black Dragons going to that god as soon as the Rom is banned. Going to be a strong pick for them, and that means now United get to take a look at a jungler for themselves. And I love this. We've seen Scream play this Bastet at such a high level. And he plays it with this huge power build, too, where he's chunking you in the late game. That's a, It's a lot of burst to take all at once. And then you've got the dot on top of it, too. Uh, and the RDO, last pick here for Benji. I love it because something that we haven't seen as much of as of late, but, man, can this pick just control team fights very well. It adds a little bit of additional CC, but more just tanky frontline presence to make sure that the Uller and the Jing Wei aren't as worried about what Black Dragons are throwing at them. Yeah, and it got to be one of the least guardian feeling guardians over there in the in the soul lane too, right? She's so willing yep. to box it out with you, even up against the likes of a Kukulin. So this is a very, very Benji-esque pick. And then Poseidon going to be the pick for Non there in the mid lane for Black Dragon. So I think we'll certainly get to see him play that at the high level. Excited to see how Non is going to do in this one because it is not easy. You cannot react with a Whirlpool on Bastet jumping at you. The deploy right. time takes too long, so she can pounce, pounce back. So he's got to be wary of that. But overall, I think that if Black Dragons can pick on Polar Bear Mike early enough, but then they have to be wary. A lot of teams will fall into the trap of, hey, we crack in the support the last two fights and it was great. Let's just keep on doing that. Can't do it that often. You know that Polar Bear Mike's going to be ready for it. Do it once or twice, get yourself a lead, and then be ready to transition that into the other characters that you need to be blowing up. Well, Black Dragons versus E United. Black Dragons have got to win this one if they want to try and keep their tournament hopes alive. And E United would love to close this out and move over to Space Station. Which one of these drafts are you liking a little bit more here, Ryan? Screams Bastet. It's stays, so good, isn't stays it? Stays filthy, man. I, I got him. <laughs> it's disgusting, isn't it? But we'll be able to see it in action here in just a few moments. Casters are standing by. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. In the desk, it should be another good one between these two teams here. United up one game to zero here. Need this one to put them through to the next round to face off against Space Station. But Blood Dragons are not out of it just yet. They can come back in this. Very safe draft, I would say, overall, which leads me to believe that they have more of a fighting chance if they don't allow these objectives to be basically taken for free. Sure. I completely understand that. Who do you guys at home think will win this one? I think you'll probably favor E United here. The Bastet pick, interesting. Still a very mobile comp yes. again from E United. Although Black Dragons is a little bit of a mid to late game composition, a little bit more so. This Nemesis, you know, takes a while to come online. I think the reason why Scream went Bastet here was because of the double physical hunter here. You're already having basic attack gods. Scream playing Mercury last game 
was getting kind of countered a little bit in terms of more Guardian Mail and Hide mm -hmm. of Nemean Lion. So he wants to avoid all that with the Scratchies here from the Bastet. And that's going to be the main focus as well, trying to avoid that passive from the Gep. So that's why we're not seeing Mercury. Well, one thing to mention as well, be very careful here in the duo lane for E United. Because how it's looking, they've got Blink on P-Bay this time round. No s and Sprint for Polar Bear Mike. So... We saw start of the game, it was sprint for sprint popped. Well, this can't happen. So PB and Marcel's have to be very careful of the fact they've got to blink and not the sprint to keep the collapse going. Panda Cat not going to be able to connect on the knockup here. PB doing a good job juking some of those hits from the Jing Wei. And United are playing aggressive with this Marcel's. composition because of PBM playing the Sylvanas. Look how far away they're zoning to the point of getting the whole wave down. I don't think they even have time to get their own red. Well, meanwhile, in the mid lane as well, Veneno actually proxy between tier one and tier two to push the wave a little bit quicker. PBA and Marcel's gonna start up the red buff, but a collapse could happen at any moment. Polar Mac though, and Panda Cat choosing to take the purple, the safer option, to make sure they just exploit the situation safer rather than the riskier one. And Black Dragons just missed their whole entire wave under yep. the dual lane. Their level two from E United is about to happen after they secure their own purple buff, and they should have a huge advantage heading into the second wave. Love what Gon just did down the right-hand side, stealing away Benji's blue. RTL would love that blue buff just to keep spamming those abilities. It's not going to be doom and gloom just yet, but a couple more of those told in. It'll start to make tell a tall. Oh, the pull here onto P Bay. Still sitting at level one, so he doesn't have the rollout. Taking a little bit of poke. Still has some potions here. Two health potions, two yeah. multi pots. PBM going to proc some more sustain for himself and this is the advantage of sylvanas i think in general united experienced this first hand in the first game so they had to give up their own purple buff and the wave and i think that e united were like oh yeah this is a great support to get early laning phase pressure and with that now blackjack is just gonna play safe in this lane hachi man get take a while to get themselves going panda cat and polar man might play the sylvanas and of course the jing way they're gonna have pressure in that lane for the time being so as long as they don't give up a kill, it's not doom and gloom that we mentioned. Black Dragon's comp is a little bit more mid-game focused, I'd say, here. Absolutely, here. P-Bay playing the game will keep his teammates alive and away from some of the burst damage from these two physical hunters. And as long as you avoid some of this damage over time from Scream with maybe an Aegis or two, that's going to be the way Black Dragon's really fight and then can make a counter engage onto E United and it's going to be important for them to, like you said, not lose that early game here because E United can just run away with it. Well, one thing to mention as well, no sprint on Black Dragon yet. And against Bastet, those cats do have a slow. So having that sprint does allow you to get away a little bit more. Specifically, I'm looking towards Nan to try and play a little bit safe around those because he's going to be a focal point of trying to chase him down. Has a couple of abilities that help him out, though, to slow those cats down, mind you. You could also trade uh, the Kraken just for the kitties, keeping anyone else up alive that was, here. Is that a good trade, though? Well, if you can get the Whirlpool under the feet of Scream, who mm. started the Aegis, not the Beads, he won't be able to pounce away, but he will have the Aegis for the Kraken. So you're forcing out the defensive relic, and you're eliminating the kitties at the same time. But I'm expecting that if, if Scream goes in, drops the kitties before the whirlpool even happens. He's just probably going to immediately pounce out. Scream trying to steal away the blue buff there. Played it safe for the most part because Benji was in base, but yet again, Black Dragon's finding wins on the right-hand side of the map. The duo side, a different story. Venenu has control in mid and stripped away the red, and the purple was taken yet again by EU United on the left-hand side. The one issue with the Bastet jungle is her early pressure in terms of clearing camps. Her level one is almost abysmal compared to most other higher-tier junglers, mm. but her level four three and higher is where it starts to show the same pacing. Compared to last game when Scream was playing the Mercury, he was able to really allow Benji a lot of safety and comfort by securing his own blue, but Benji now piloting this Ardeo needs more of a demand with MP5 sustain to stay relevant against an aggressive Kukulin. And with that invade, Kliss hits level 5 first, meaning he'll hit level 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. More importantly, the level 12 for the second relic. Yeah, just keep an eye on what Bastet does this game, because I have a feeling the reason they've picked this up, this Bastet in the jungle, is more to do with the split push that they saw be effective towards the later stages of game 1 on the Mercury and with Athena. 
Basta is great at looking to split push wherever possible. It's about creating chaos, is yes. how E-United really won that last game. The solo kill from Benji! Oh, He's gonna juke. get jumped on, but it will be returned with the tower. Good trade out from Kliz there, just using his abilities well to avoid the, some of the damage, because it was only one basic that was required, one in hand. Yeah. And at the end of the day, Benji just overextended a little bit far. He got the kill, obviously, but one for one. That's true. Getting the first blood bounty, though, definitely helping Benji in the long oh, run. I, don't, I disagree, because Kliz has got teleport. And Benji oh, that's doesn't. true. So that's, that's going to hurt him a little bit. Although Benji might be able to get back to the lane in time now. 80 seconds is a big window here trying to walk back into it. So as Kliz already has that experience advantage, he's going to get even more so. And I yeah. like the fact that he's kind of holding on to this wave a little bit I longer, agree. trying to deny some more minions. I actually think if he pushed that wave in hard, he probably would have not worked out very well at all. And you would have been right. The first blood goal would have mattered there. Harpy's contested between the two. I think Scream got both of those, it seemed there. As Benji and Kliz go back once again to fight in a way. But Kliz with the minion advantage there. And we've gone hanging around. They're looking for a pick on Bastet, it seems. No, they're just going to go for the invade on the blue. I don't think they know that Scream is right there. They will see her right around this the corner, but it was too late. There's three Black Dragons members, so Scream needs to watch out. Yeah, the duo lane's still in the duo lane. Both members are supports too, so not worried about that. Panda out of Mana over there. But I do like seeing the rotation out of Nan on that Poseidon. Trying to use that mobility to make rotations around the map a bit as we watch these guys in the duo lane continue to trade out. Panicat, without too much mana, needs to be careful about his positioning, but with a two-level advantage, he really has this laning phase by the horns completely. The combination of Jingwei and Sylvanas, so much clear potential. Haven't had to use any sort of defensive relics, but now with the blink from Pibe available with a Cataclysm, that could be an opportunity on the left side because Panicat also started with the Aegis as opposed to the Beats. Yeah, speaking of Pibe as well, she's a focus for the Geb this time around. Once that cooldown reduction Gives you a nice bit of mana too, but it's mainly for the cooldown reduction. You're looking at this in the support role. Have those shields up a little bit more often, a little bit more often on the Cataclysm too. Surprise the United a little bit, because obviously United are very good at timers, you know? The NA and EU teams generally do write down the timers for the most part of like, hey, beads burn, Aegis on cooldown, is ults on cooldown? When do we expect them to be up? And because of how much mobility that a Geb has with that rollout, it makes sense as to why PB was going for the Shoes of Focus, whereas Sylvanas, no mobility to really speak of oh, here, no. gets the sprint, gets also the Traveler Shoes, so trying to get a lot of movement speed to keep up with the Rolling Rock. Well, we're seeing the fights on the right-hand side, with the left once again being invaded, proxied by EU United now. As Polar Bear, Mike, and Panic, I clear the wave between the Tier 1 and Tier 2 tower. Venenu takes away the red before Black Dragons can get here, and they're going to have to surrender the purple buff on top. Wow. This is just complete dom like this is not dominance in the skill uh, in the kill board chart, but it's more about the objective control. And not, we're not even talking about the gold fears or pyromancers. We're talking about the little things even before that. And just stripping away the purple and red. It's not yeah. just hurting the, the dueling between Marcel's and Vivi, but now Nan that's playing the Poseidon is already two levels behind. His Krakens aren't going to be hitting that hard without the red. Scream's coming up with the blue to find out he's already down. Looks towards Kliz, pounces on his face as well. We'll give him some extra rage. Kitty's online, and Benji's looking towards Kliz, and we'll find the kill before Kliz can do anything about it. Garn and Kliz just hung around a little bit too long there. They got the blue and wanted to fight. Instead, they should have just backed up. The ultimate was too late there. Didn't disrupt the kitties. You need to get those kitties off of you if you're going to survive. Garn's is going to get knocked up, pulled, and Venenu with the shots. And that's the big situation now is that United have dominated the left-hand side of the map. If you think about how this has gone, it's been Blue buff of Black Dragon stolen. However, United have stolen the red and purple in response. So it's a two for one, just in buffs every single time. And with no pressure coming out from Black Dragons on the left of the middle lane, it's allowing them to start transversing this back across to the right hand side of the map. And that's a favorable trade every single time for E United here. Benji is still going to do RDO things in the late game. Sure. You're not going to deny him the experience. You can deny all the gold you want with that blue buff here. But once he gets the shoes of focus and breastplate of valor just now finishing it, that 30% cooldown reduction is going to make him so annoying to spam those abilities. And then you have a huge power spike play from Panicad and Venenu that transitions very comfortably sure. in that mid game. So this goal fury is going to look more and more enticing as we approach that nine minute mark. I will say it's not a bad idea to try and get Kliz ahead on the Kukulun though. We've seen how dominant he can be in this tournament and previous ones too, but Nan 
Oh, I tell you what, if that hail of arrows hit from Venenu, that would have been a little bit closer for Nan. He may have been in trouble, but some defense around the red as Venenu was poking it out. It's secure from Black Dragon. They get their own red buff. Hallelujah. But can they secure their own purple buff? It's both Panicat and PBM starting it up. It is PB right around the corner trying to time that knock up. I'm and surprised. he did get it. He did, but I'm surprised Gon didn't come over there to the left-hand side. Like, he's nemesis against a tree. Sylvanas kind of struggles against Nemesis for the most part, and his ultimate was on cooldown. Oh, it wasn't, I should say. But it was after the last engagement. Scream stealing away caps on the right, oh, though. But his pounce is down here, having to use the ultimate Beautiful. defensively, just taking advantage of. Beautiful. No Aegis available as well. Take that into account. And Scream here going for the transcendent start. Looking for that extra power, obviously, the cooldown. We've seen this out of some junglers now and again. Kind of tape it off, but Bastet does have high scaling. Oh, yeah. She thrives off of having high physical power because of the scaling, like you mentioned. Also, that 10% cooldown oh, reduction yes, is more impactful than a crusher right now would be between that extra damage off of your ability. Since you don't really have that much physical power anyway for crusher to augment your abilities, it's better off to build it up now and then get the crusher later. Right, you got focus. Here's the word pull. He's on him. He ults himself. Just to get Paide away, guns can't give chase. No ultimate available that time. That's true. Without the Nemesis ultimate, the tree survives another day. This has been a reoccurring strategy from a lot of SPL teams. They let immobile guardians go so that they can focus them. There's a bit of trouble here up against two targets. Leaps over the wall to safety, but already at half health. No rage to speak of, so no transformation available. Ultimate on cooldown. Rotation coming in from God, no to help him out, and that will force Benji back. So Clays will survive. No teleport either, so it's going to be a little bit careful. Still going to go in, though. 1v3 looking for <laughs> the cancelling of the bat more than anything else. Will also proxy between that tier 1 and tier 2. Benji is so experienced in terms of knowing what he can and can't get away with. Keep in mind, he's been around the block as well before and with the enemy squad finishing second at Worlds. We just saw Panda, cam Panda Cat's camera there on the left-hand side, and he's looking a little bit frustrated because I don't think Marcel's going to fight him. And Panda Cat just wants to fight in that lane, and Marcel's like, nope, I'm sitting under my tower. Red buff, meanwhile, though, will be stolen away. And Mike is still in a bit of trouble here. Ultimate is on him. Kraken 2. The tree is in trouble. And he will fall. Oh, Venenu jumping in, though. Panicat trying to make the rotation happen. Gons will finally fall to the basic out of Venenu. Pibe trying to retreat as Panicat secures the purple buff. You were talking about the emotions here between these two players as Venenu gets on himself wow. another kill question mark he's still going in for it which almost is a little greedy nobody though around from black dragons to try and punish this because p is low obviously gone is dead and non is completely in an awkward spot out of mana so i was talking about the emotion between these two hunters here panic cat could be flustered as all he wants but if marcells is not going to fight him in game number one when marcells had a one level yep. lead he's definitely not going to box in a panic cat having a two level discrepancy Gold Fury to United. They did get the red, they didn't get the purple, but with the Gold Fury going down, it just continues to extend the lead of United found so far in this game. Only real lane that's done semi okay, if not a bit ahead, I would say, at one point in time was Clears, but now look, Benji has a one level advantage. Just being able to get all the farm that he really needs to. Forcing Kliz out. Once the, like I said, the cooldown reduction turns Ardio into a, almost a different god entirely, being able to spam all those abilities here. Pyromancer now gonna get looked at and secured by Black Dragons. Yeah, they did secure it, only really Benji to there, but Nan's in a bit of trouble here. Has to use the Whirlpool to defend himself. Jukes back into it nicely. Pibe was hanging around to support. So nice answer yet again from Black Dragons, realizing they lose the gold, but they get Pyro. Scream wants his kill, though. Oh, he'll gonna, he's going to get it if he commits, but he's really afraid of the shield from Pibe. Lazy Max, look at the map! Look at the map! Big shield from Pibe. That should actually keep him alive, and now it's Scream in trouble. Oh, he is actually going to avoid one, but he can't avoid the other. Forced to go into the Aegis. He has no pounce, getting slowed, and ultimately will fall for his transgression. Great cracker from Nan there. He was back in trying to play safe, and he's like, hang on a second. This little kitty, she could come back. And I'm like, I'm just going to wait patiently for this. He saw it come in, forces the Aegis, finally his life. But Venenu, while well, Bastet was getting, keeping them all busy, has taken the tier one tower. And that's why Nan picked Poseidon last, honestly, because cats just hate water. And that worked out beautifully for them there. It does, you're right. Yeah. They, they hate water. Both. Some do, though. You Some of them will like to be in the sink and then like, have the faucet running. We're talking about cats. Yeah. Like, it's dogs with F dot and cats with you. Now is that what's about to start happening? Well, I mean, the only time we're ever going to be talking about cats when Scream is in the game. That's true. I mean, we're not seeing too much Fenrir or Goobis just lately. One day, we will. But not this time. Four to four 
is the kill threshold. The gold is still a United's favor for about 3,000 experience, four and a half. At 13 and a half minutes, it's a pretty good lead, that Tully. It's not small. It's better of a lead than it was the last game because at 16 yeah. and a half minutes or so, the last game, United only had about a two and a half thousand goal lead. But more importantly, is this experience lead that's really starting to stretch. And that's how the dual lane here. Three level lead for PBM. He can back for that second rally here. Working on getting that blink now, working on probably a Jade Emperor's here, trying to limit some of the physical damage out of Gons here. And the two level differential from Panda Cat now finishing off the Ikaval, whereas Marcel's looking for that executioner or chin size. I'm not too upset with Black Dragon's decision making here in terms of let's pressure the right hand side of the map at the start. Let's play through the mid, the jungle, and the solo laner. As long as Dual Lane doesn't die, we should be okay. And that's been the story so far. The only issue is, is that United have recognized that and abused the left-hand side jungle heavily, making sure there's a big lead there between the dual lanes. And it just comes back down to the Sylvanas pick from PBM. Panicat still playing the Xingwei compared to game number one. That hasn't changed. But Pibe having a more defensive support in the get means that he doesn't have the same lane control that he had in game number one. Clis could be in trouble here. Has to ult to buy himself a window. The cripple is down, so Clis can leap away soon and will do so. Ultimate already used, and that's a failed attempt from United. A kid and Clis, but not the tower. They will secure themselves another 500 gold. No one from Black Dragons wants to stop that from going through because they have to worry about what's happening on the left side. Gons gonna get knocked up. Panicat holding on to the agility for now, not wanting to overcommit there with Poseidon right around the corner. Black Dragons really starting to be pinned back at their tier two towers. Now all the tier ones are down. And only that one on the right hand side has really been chipped up by E United thanks to the early pressure towards Benji. But as you said, Tolu, the longer the game goes, the more and more RTO will still do RTO things. Just having so much cooldown reduction, even some penetration. That Void Stone allowing uh, PBM to do some more damage with that Wrath of Terror and the Wisps. Now the Tier 2 Tower is going to get looked at here on the right side. Four members from Black Dragons trying to deter E United here, while Scream still lurking in that mid lane. Has a lot of mobility with the Pounds being able to jump over that wall whenever he wants to. The buff is stolen there. Gon can't secure it for himself. They'll be just waiting for him to come over for that one too. Marcel seems to be a little bit careful in the mid because Panda Cat and Scream still hanging around towards that mid area. They will look towards him as the siege on the right has come to nothing realistically. A bit of tower to tower damage, and that's all she wrote. They're probably looking for a pull from PBM, well, the same war. way that PBay was doing in the last game. Very excellent pulls coming out of him. Set up some kills as well. Was really good defensive Wrath of Terrors, but the way United is positioning, there's nothing defensive about what they want to do. They want to try to force something here. And with Gold Fury coming up in yep. five seconds, that's where they're planning on doing. And I think that's one of the reasons why they just relieve the tier two pressure to go towards the goal. But Black Dragons making their way over to the left hand side too. Benji's a little bit later than everybody. Has his teleport available though, so we'll be here soon. Don't forget those kitty cats. They can tank up a storm on that Gold Fury if required. Mike goes for a pull. Can't find it. Forces a reset on Gold. Going to do some poke onto Mike, but not wanting to overcommit there. They're trying to bait out that Wrath of Terror, but PB. Gonna get stunned out, forced to use that shield on himself. Kitties will be used as well, but a lot of cooldown reduction here. 30% for Scream. Lot wasted on Pibay there, who still has his blink and his ultimate available. Gold is still being unleashed. A grunt will pull down from none. Nice cataclysm too, but Panic has already taken a life. Marcel gets one of his spots, but then he's very low. He's gonna run for the hills. Mike's gonna have to run away too. Round the back is coming Benji, but the damage could be done. Oh, Gons. Scream chooses beats. Gons needs to find it, and he will. That's two dead. Pull one through the wall. Your Gons goes in. He finds the double on Venenu. He pulled it through the wall to kill his hunter. And now Pibay is in trouble against Benji. The Gold Fury is still available here as the three men fighting Benji. Mike's hanging around trying to support. Now Gond is in trouble. Oh, he's going to get stunned out. The swipe's coming through. The shield going to oh. buy him a moment. He but it damage. wasn't used for the swipe. Perfect patience from Benji. So Nan ended up back in there. I know he was out of mana, but he needed the presence. The extra man would have just scared them off potentially. Now Benji at level 17 is going in the jungle on his own, looking to keep the aggression going. With Pipe being this lo low, the whole idea is <laughs> to keep the Guardian here, not allowing him to back, to allow the respawn timers to be effective from E United getting back to the goal here. I have never seen Benji run as fast as I did until he saw that Whirlpool and that Poseidon turn up all of a sudden. He just turned tail and went, nope, 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 nope. I'm not getting involved in that. And that however, look at what's going on the left. Goal Fury is being done. Nana smelled it out though and is like, hang on boys. 
I know what's up this time. Polar Bear Mike didn't find the pull this time. The knockback was good. Gold is getting low. Cracking out. He's not enough to secure. He united. Get the Gold Fury's Veneno turns up to secure it. And now Nat has to fall back. The leash was so good. Getting it away from the middle of the crack. And Panic Hat still waiting, but spots out three. So he's not going to be forcing anything anytime soon. And United walking away like bandits. Forcing the Gold Fury before that time around they did that in a four on five situation where benji wasn't quite there sure. and once he did get there he was able to play cleanup crew i think united need to fix that little mistake having all five members and a lot of these objectives will be handed to them black dragons however couldn't really make anything happen with that one man advantage even though gons did fall alongside kliz once benji made that rotation happen he stopped all the backs from yeah. black dragons giving plenty of momentum and time for united to get back in the thick of things there was definitely two things in that toy for me one was the investment into a geb which i'm kind of suspect about okay there was a damage check you didn't have the damage but you invested quite a lot into trying to kill the geb and then taking the fight 4v5, knowing that the Geb was still alive, which was your target, with his ultimate available, helped to turn that around. And I guess the third one is definitely Benji not even being there. And shows how important Benji is to help to relieve some of the pressure on the back line. Well, forcing the fight was definitely important for EU United, considering that there was no second relic from PBA at the moment. Just now, picking up the shell here. The two-level lead from PBM really showing strides of success from EU United. But the problem was that fifth member needed to be there to get it a lot cleaner. They still got it at the end of the day, yep. but they probably could have transitioned to the right side a little bit faster and maybe not even lose as many members. Not going to lie here. I understand the shell from PBA, but I actually would have liked to maybe seen the upgraded Cursed Ark instead because what that would do is the Wisps, when they heal, they're going to refresh that buff the whole time. Not only that, but same again, Ben, He's got some sustain in that kit that will heal his teammates and actually uh, provide that debuff in the team fights. And technically, it's a very squishy composition on the damage dealers here. The problem with upgraded Curse Donk is it's very conditional, right? Like sure. you would have to all in commit whether or not you wanted to at that point if you're trying to take full advantage of that relic. Whereas Belt of Frenzy, if you're looking for more offensive plays, That's true. Belt of Frenzy would be more consistent about when you want to pull the trigger on certain objectives or team fights. Well, this team fight's important now because Black Dragons need this fire giant. If they lose this game, they are on the way home. Good initiation from Polar Bear Mike. Hit multiple targets to be followed along with Scream looking to wrap round the back. Front line of Black Dragons doing a good job of tanking up a storm, but Pebay and Clay's chipped down. Scream comes in, they're looking to clean up Pebay, and Pebay's so low. He gets his cataclysm off. Scream's one hit from death. Cracking in the mush takes him down one for one, but Venenu quickly makes it two Chopping for one. Chopping away, stunning out Clay's. Very important to hear. Airstrike coming out of Panic Cat. Nah, I'm gonna get rooted by Benji. Taken out here, so it's a three for one. Panic Cat trying to run away PBM with the Wisps. It's going to be Marcel's. That's the fourth victim. It's going to be a Deicide if they can find Kliz here. Yeah, big play there for me, United. And I think the only thing that went wrong for Black Dragons looking at that fight didn't protect their backliners. They got split. They all scattered in different directions. The front line were focused on the carries. The damage dealers got left against the likes of Benji, for example, who just takes them down and they can't do anything against that. Black Dragons without vision on the fire giant Clears. side. They got funneled through here. Kliz trying no. to make it happen, but EU United secure the objective. And now Kliz, it's going to be in a world of hurt if he can't get out of this one. Pibay's on the way to try and give him a shield to help out. But Pibay's going to be careful how close he gets. He's already used the shield now, and now he's all up to Kliz to survive. Won't be the story this time round. He went for the attempt to the fire giant, cost him his life. Luckily, they won't lose anything during his death. And the problem here that I'm seeing from Black Dragons is they're not the ones getting in it, the thick of things. It's United that's pulling the objective, resetting the objective, and then forcing the team fight. Black Dragons needed to use P-Base Blink to get in their Cataclysm during the Fire Giant, so that way, when United was walking away from the ring, they're going to be stuck in all that damage over time, and that could allow that sixth man that Black Dragons really need to turn the tides. A little bit of confidence out of Panda Cat. I think he recognizes there's three people here. Gone and P Bay going. Blink Cactus him off the mark. B's already used by Panda Cat though. No ultimate available for him. It and just came off cooldown. Sui. It just came off cooldown as he died. Panda Cat's head going up to the ceiling. He's like, why? If only I survived for another half a second, he would have been able to airstrike probably towards purple buff and go through that wall. That is one of the things though that I'm impressed with Latin America and Brazil is that even though they're down, they don't allow the team to just slowly, methodically group up to start pushing towers. Like, you know what? They're all basing, so they might be staggered in terms of who's backed and who's not. And if someone's alone, they get a pick, it can slow them down. You gotta look for something here when you're behind this much. And that 30 seconds 
Well, make that 20 seconds now. Needed to be more defenses. Losing a tier two tower in a five on four. They might get one of the right hand side though here, Tolly, because Marcel's just took a tier one and pressuring for this tier two. It's going to make a call on the United. Who's going to base? Panda Cat is up in a few seconds, though, with the Jingwei passive. Oh, and teleport no. from Benji will force him back. At least Gans is here to make sure that he wasn't going to get dove on. But United, not only did they get an objective, defend their own objective, but they're getting a second one here. E United are all over the board. Black Dragons just can't find the plug to take away from the wall. Yeah, the game looks relatively interesting, but it's 13,000 gold nearly now. For E United and the experience still matters, I want to say. Uh, almost 12,000, we're just over now. You can see a couple of people on Black Dragon still need to hit that level 20 mark. So until they all hit level 20, it's still advantage in the experience. Yeah, Vanini doing a lot of player damage this game here. It was Benji finding a lot of poke in the laning phase, but Uller mid has not been shut down at all this entire game. And that's the way you normally do it. You got to focus him out the same way that Black Dragons did in the first game. It was a Sir Ked Blink gank that found him without the beads at game number one, but Game number two here, Venenu has been left unchecked, sitting at 4-1-3 and three here. He's almost six-slotted and been looking so superior. I was kind of hoping they'd leave Mike to do that Pyromancer on his own then, just to see how long it would take him to do. Because he started it on his own, then his Hunters did turn up, but at first I was like, is he just going to try and solo this? I think he could. He, he probably made the call, like, all right, let me solo this, I got this, I got this. You guys get the tier two tower, still soloing it, like 90 seconds later. All right, guys, it's 25% health, game's over, but... Well, Benji now, very confident in the mid lane, just eating those autos from Marcel, waiting for his team to turn up. Only one tier two tower stands from stopping EU Knight to look towards all three of the Phoenixes. No fire giant around Panda Cat's waist, remember? He did take a tumble earlier on, as did Scream. So this two, two, two tower will not be defended, unwisely so. Look at the utility from PBM's build here, going for the Lotus Crown as opposed to the Jade Emperors here, trying to get more protection from the Wisps, augment some of that out of combat healing with the Rod of Asclepius, and then the double hunter composition. Normally you think in the draft like, oh, okay, double hunter, you get a Fafnir for the covers, but that's not always the case that's needed to. because you can get Shogun's Kusari to do that. Well, it will help them out quite a bit here. A couple of members of Unite just returned to base to make sure they find a couple of more wards and find items. Panda Cat, all the damage is basically with Venenu, Panda Cat and Scream now on the way. Pulled by Mike and Benji on zone duty, trying to keep control around this fire giant. Fire giant respawning in less than 50 seconds. Still all phoenixes stand for Black Dragons, but You're they the don't have the vision that they really need. They have one regular ward that's a Above that little wall that separates the fire giant and that right side mid harpy, but that's not really enough to see the health pool of the fire giant and see when is that opportunity that they can go in and sneak the steal. Totally, the last fight we saw between the two teams, the United won it handily, as I said, because they got to the back line. But uh, Phoenix defense, that's a little bit trickier outside of Bastet. They're really going to have to dive in deep. And I think with the Whirlpools, they've got a lot of control around the Phoenix. I agree. Benji is definitely going to be the one trying to get in the thick of yeah. things first. PBM's going to stay in the back, trying to heal everybody up using the full benefits of that Rod of Asclepius Lotus Crown combination. So United is just playing the waiting game. Fire Giant respawning. And look at what they the see the worst. You saw the pings on the left hand side of the map, and I think that's because the minion wave is slowly pushing in E United's favor. Then the call might be from United. Just see how that minion wave does if somebody goes back to defend it. We can definitely start this fire. Jump. If Venenu is that accurate with Hail of Arrows, that'll make the siege a lot easier to do. That range is just so obnoxious when you're playing defense. And that's what United oh, is definitely looking for. Sneaky scream going down the mid lane, looking for the Phoenix, using the minions. This is what a Bastet can do. Someone's going to deal with this. And I don't think they've noticed. They're trying to engage instead. They know they're not going to be able to get there in time. So they're looking at the tanks. The Wrath of Terror onto two here. Yeah, and Vaughn gets obliterated. Venenu with a stun combination. Still looking towards Venenu. Is gone though. Used all his abilities so far. Venenu back to safety. Middle Phoenix is down. Scream could have probably ended the game then. Possibly. There is no towers to speak of here and now they lost a five on four and now e united are making it a five on four for them oh, taking out no. pbay that's gonna be a second dead black dragon looking for clears on the backside, but he takes out venenu first only gone and clears alive and they're on the wrong side of town specifically e united side of town here all they're trying to do is buy a little bit of time Cliz is just gonna jump through the jungle Oof, close the play totally i mean 
go for the 4v5, agreed. But they hit both the tanks. They hit Sylvanas and, of course, the RTO. E United split very well, and the only two people that were clumped together were the two tanks. The timing of PBM's Wrath of Terror disrupts the flow and the combination. Benji's not going to let this one go. I don't think so. And Clancy's in a lot of trouble. He will eventually He's dead. fall here. He's actually dead. If he has health potion. There we go. Benji feeling himself. Oh, Can he take out another 1v1 opportunity? I think RTO is just in that spot in this game now where he's unmanageable from anybody. He's going to take up a couple of members of the team. And you saw them actually get the Cataclysm off onto Benji, but he was tanky enough to sustain the storm. And before they could even get that Kraken off from Nan, Nan was evaporated by the two Hunters. The Enhanced Fire Giant is going to allow United even more structure damage. Blink PBM the forcing the beats from Nan, but then getting the reset. Nan, the next target for E United. Yeah, very good beats there. Left hand Phoenix is pulled, but a big pull from Polar Bear. Mike onto P Bay. Puts him in a world of hurt. A stun. And a good stun from Benji stops the rollout. Meanwhile, Marcel's will get away. Great Kraken from Nan to slow them down. Phoenix still alive, but members are getting low, and Benji's dead. Took too many Phoenix shots for his troubles, but. Sacrificing his life for the greater good. Right side Phoenix will take a tumble. Cliz responding makes it a 5 on 4 now for Black Dragons. Plenty of time for Benji to respawn and still use that Fire Giant buff for United to secure the last Phoenix of the game. Yeah, not many members really left with the Fire Giant buff. Now the couple have taken a tumble. With two Phoenixes down, the hard work has really been done because now they can all just start to group on the left hand side. And I was really worried about Phoenix defenses being a strong point for Black Dragons with comp. The United have made sure they've not had to do a five on five. It's true here. They're just finding the picks in the jungle skirmishes, making their Phoenix struggles that much easier. And there is no struggle when you're just walking in alongside minions to get it with the kitties as well. Scream did a good job in game number one with Benji to get that tier two dual lane tower and showing a similar idea here that Scream basically solos the middle Phoenix once the minions enter there. And Black Dragons wanting to defend the Fire Giant for so long. This is how E United kind of pull and push their composition at their will, securing any objective they want. Tully, I'm not being delusional here, but I do feel like both Black Dragons and Nocturne's Latam and Brazil really are getting closer to break in this NA and EU issue that the other international teams have had. It feels like they are slowly making strides in the right directions every time we see them. So their draft is good. I'm not going to deny that. Their early game, they have the right ideas. Now the issue is the whole respect factor. Once they get over the boogeyman fear of the North Americans and Europeans, sure. I think that if they're just comfortable enough to make the aggressive plays, that they can easily blow this door wide open here that everyone thinks like all of a sudden that international teams can't compete because they certainly can in the long run here trying to find the victories here against EU United Black Dragons need to hold on to this left side Phoenix. Little Phoenix about to spawn too. Benji just trying to zone people away as Kliz goes in and look how much damage Kliz took already. Scream will pounce in and get the kill. Drop the kitty cats down and in goes Panda Cat looking for Nan. He used to use by Nan but he's going to get triple by Polar Bear Mike and the dot damage goes through. This could be the end of the tournament for the Black Dragons. E United however they tumble yesterday, but today they march on to face their North American brethren in Space Station Gaming. Looking very clean here against the Brazilians. Panic Cat, actually, I think, purchased an item there. In the fountain against Black Dragon is a little disrespectful, but either way, showing their dominance here, winning game two. But they go straight into another game now, do they? Yeah. United. So that's going to be an interesting tell. Been a lot of talk about would it be better to have back to back best of threes or have the break like Space Station Gaming did there? Black Dragons, though. Commiserations to them. They have put on a wonderful tournament for us alongside Nocturne's gaming uh, this tournament so far. Benenu during the interview actually said that he would prefer those back-to-back -back best of threes. Now that he's warmed up and he looks very solid piloting this Uller, Space Station Gaming definitely looking at this set and be like, oh, okay, we see you, Benenu. Probably not going to allow that one to go through in their set. Now, this is only spring as well, so take into account there's still summer and, of course, fall, where we'll get to see more of these international teams compete regularly, which I think is a really big thing, Tully, because generally we only ever really saw them at the World Championships yep. or maybe one additional land through the year, but seeing them every time means we may see some progress even quicker than before. United was dominant all across the board here, and there's so many members that made a lot of highlight plays. It's very difficult for me to pinpoint where the MVP is going to go. Well, let's find out. We head over to the desk. It's John Finch and Ryan Bay. Thanks, Hindu man. Thank you, Tolly. MVP going to be selected by you there in Mixer chat. If I had a vote, 
Which I guess I do. I can just log in, but I would be voting what? for Benji. He looked great on the RDM. First of all, that's the correct vote. Secondly, don't get on your phone and vote in Mixer Chat, please. We're trying to do a desk segment. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Okay, cool. You said you you said you could, so I just wanted to make sure. I mean, I I guess I physically were capable of Already it, but no, I want that Finch. I, okay. But I don't want to. I want to put on a good broadcast. You know, that's that's all we're gonna do. So, United were the ones that came out on top. So sadly, that means we are gonna have to say goodbye to Black Dragons. An impressive run for them. I know that they weren't able to find any victories, but they certainly have demonstrated that they've got mechanicals of skill and ability. All they need is just to get a little bit further to catch up with the rest of these NAEU teams, but it is going to be Benji selected as your MVP after after that last game, and I do not blame you there, Chad. I agree with you 100%. And this is the fight right here. This is the tail end of a, of a chase that where Black Dragons ended up on top of an engagement. Uh, Polar Bear Mike trolls Venenu and pulls him into tower, you know, pulls Gons into tower. That kills was Venenu. crazy. Right? That was <laughs> truly trolling, by the way, but... Outside of that, that looks like like it was going to be an opportunity for Black Dragons to turn around and have a real shot in this game. And then Benji comes over and is like, hey, I thought about it. And uh, no, we're going to win. Thanks. You know, I think we'll take this victory. And Benji, w from that moment on, was immediately MVP. And you heard mind. Tully talk about it in that actual fight. What was so important is that he didn't allow Black Dragons to sort of regroup, right? In fact, he created space for the rest of E United to come in and just take the gold for you off the back of it. What a huge play for them and help swing that whole match. It kind of felt like even more towards their favor. Now, I will say, if Benji's MVP and Kliz soloed Benji, what does that make Kliz? That makes Kliz the M MVP, the most, most valuable player. Congratulations, Kliz. You earned it the MMVP, an official award coming from Finch to you right here, right now. But let's go ahead and take a look at the bracket, since, as I mentioned, we just got through with those two lower bracket matches there between Space Station and Nocturnes, where Space Station came out on top, then E United and Black Dragon. So, unfortunately, Nocturnes and Black Dragons are out. Space Station and E United are going to be this next matchup that's going to be coming here in a moment. Only the SPL teams remain, Finch. Now <laughs> it gets down to brass tacks, and now these two teams at the fight Right now, the Space Station is walking <laughs> into the booth where Black Dragons are just sitting and getting ready. And E United just got to figure out what they want to do against SSG right away. Winner of that is moving on. Loser goes home. Goes home. That's crazy. Yeah, we kick them out. We're getting rid of them. That's, I yeah, mean, I mean can you believe it? I mean, we're going to lose either the world champions or a team with Baskin, Andy, Barracuda, Jeff, and Aquarius. What? That's what we're moving into next, Ryan. I mean, can you believe it? Welcome to Smite Masters, man. And, and look, United, they did a lot of things well in that last set. Scream has got to continue to look pretty solid right. if they want to have a chance up against Space Station, which I'm sure they. these two teams, you saw Jeff see it, or say it rather, in their post-game interview. They have been scrim partners for a long time. Right. They're very comfortable against one another. They play against each other all the time. But scrim environment <laughs> and SPL environment are different. Then you factor in land environment, and it's a completely different story. These two teams split during the regular season. Right. Excited to see what they have in store for and us. And they were both 2-0s <laughs> yes. during the regular season too, right? So at both times, both teams looked dominant. But we actually do have an interview standing by, so that way we can hear from the players. We're live now here with you, United. Congratulations, first of all, on your win over Black Dragons. Uh, first question, really, to you guys is, these guys have been around for a while. Brazil, Latin America, you played against both this weekend. Well, this week, I should say. And have you guys seen improvements from these other regions? Because on paper, it looks like they have got better. Uh, yes, there's been drastic improvements since the last time we've seen these guys at Worlds. I think they've all adapted to the meta that we showed them. They changed it up, maybe made more comfortable picks for themselves if they couldn't play what we played. Um, their mechanical abilities are a lot better, and I'm actually very impressed with the, how they showed up here. Moving forward to your next matchup against Space Station Gaming here. Venenu said that he would prefer the warm-up and go straight into another best of three. Do you guys like this kind of direction here with the double elimination to play one right after another? Uh, I don't really mind it. I don't think it matters either way. I think uh, some people prefer rest and some people prefer to be warm. Um, I think either really is fine. So obviously, I guess we move on to Space Station, who's your next opponent momentarily straight after this interview, pretty much. Uh, you guys yourselves, obviously, you played against Space Station through the season. What do you expect from this match between the two of you? Honestly, on paper, you're probably going to say 2-0, but realistically, how do you think this is going to play out? You read my mind. I mean, I thought coming into the land, they're like a hard matchup for us. It's because they know everything we do, and uh, historically, like they win more of the scrims, but I feel like in the past like few splits, I'd say since I joined the team pretty much in summer, 
Uh, we've kind of stomped them in actual SPL games pretty much historically, and on land we pretty much have just beaten them. So kind of hard. I think I expect them to be really good, and I expect close games, but uh, if history repeats itself, we should win pretty easily. So speaking of history here, starting off season five was a very slow start for EU United here. But here you guys are in day number three against Space Station Gaming. What changed since the first half of the split to lead you to qualifying to land to where you are now today? I think we, uh, all jokes aside, we stopped trolling. Like, uh, our scrum environment was horrible the first three weeks of uh, the season. We underestimated everybody. We thought it'd be free wins, so we didn't take anything seriously. Uh, not to take away from the people that beat us, like obviously they deserve the wins. But um, after we lost, we kind of woke up. We we're like, if we lose, we're not making land. Even even though it was kind of decided by another team this split, but we kind of just got our stuff together and kept playing. Well, last question before we let you go. Obviously, we talk about a land meta that always seems to develop over time. Obviously, coming into this, EU had one style. NA had another. Is there really a land meta that's developed here this time, Mike? I mean, I think historically that does happen, but I think at this land, the two metas are like pretty similar. I, I mean, using our game as versus rival as an example, like game one, we stomped them, ended in like 25 minutes. Game two, game three, uh, we get ahead, we lose one team fight, they stomp us, win super quick. Like, they didn't really pick late game. Like, they're, it just is off early fights. Like, everybody was grouping. Like, they were invading our speed at like five minutes, I think, in a couple of the games. So, I think everybody's playing pretty fast. Everybody's playing the fight early. Um, I just think teams have different styles. Like Wolfie wants to play Raw, uh, Baskin wants to play Hunters. Like it's a style differences, but I think in general, like the meta is pretty similar. All right, good to hear. Well, congratulations first of all on beating Blood Dragons, and good luck against Space Station later on. Thanks, Thank you. Colin.